One person who is not convinced by these ideas is Stephen Hawking. He has recently proposed a new law of physics which says that time travel is impossible. He calls it the chronology protection principle. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space and time are warped and distorted by the matter and energy in the universe. It might therefore be possible that they could be warped so much that you could go on a journey and come back before you set out. This could cause all sorts of problems. Perhaps fortunately, it seems there may be a chronology protection principle which prevents travel into the past and so means that we don't have to rewrite the history books. What seems to happen is that when space-time gets near to allowing travel into the past, a large number of particles appear, and these prevent one warping space-time anymore. The existence of a chronology protection principle is supported by theoretical work that I and other people have done. Stephen Hawking has defended recently what he calls the chronology protection conjecture that says time travel is absolutely impossible. I think he's wrong. I think that uh, looking carefully at the detailed arguments uh, which people have produced indicates that it's quite plausible a time machine can be constructed. The paradox of time travel arose because it was assumed you traveled back to the same universe. But what if we didn't go back to the same universe we started from? What if we went back to one of the parallel universes? In our original time machine model, the space-time loop took us back into the past in the same universe. But quantum theory says that there are many parallel universes. Our loop, instead of joining back onto the same universe, links up at an earlier time with one of these parallel universes. A traveler who enters the time machine in one universe will not only end up at an earlier time, but also in a different universe. One of the consequences of this movement is that you could meet up with the copies of yourself who live in the parallel universes. Dudes, you guys are going to go back in time. Yeah! You are going to have the most excellent adventure through history. Who are you guys? We're you, dude! <sighs> Suppose I do an experiment. With this time machine, I will travel through quantum space-time back a few minutes into the past. To test the paradox, I will shoot my slightly younger self. Let's look at only two of the many parallel universes. In the left-hand universe, I decide to go into the time machine and travel back in time to the right-hand universe just before I set off. So long, partner. The paradox is avoided because when I traveled in time, I also traveled into another universe where I shot a copy of myself. So long, partner. In my original universe, no one shot me, and so I was free to travel, and no paradox arises. Passports, please. Moving ahead to February 12th, 1999. But what about the other objection to time travel? How do we explain the fact that we have not been invaded by hordes of tourists from the future? One of the properties of a time machine is that you can never visit a time which is earlier than the moment the time machine came into existence. For instance, if a time machine is created in um, the 21st century, then it will be impossible for visitors in the far future to visit us. They can visit the 21st century, but not us. In particular, creating a time machine will not make it possible for us to see the dinosaurs. However, if another advanced civilization created many hundreds of millions of years ago a time machine, it would be 
possible to visit the dinosaurs. So if you want to meet your own distant ancestors, you'll either have to find a naturally occurring time machine somewhere in the universe, or borrow a time machine created in the past by an extraterrestrial civilization.